jump on in. I, I, I mean, of this collection on this site, I personally favor the living theater. I think that's probably the mm -hmm. best overall collection, but, um, the Hong Kong yesterday is, is, is solid as well. Uh, but yeah, whatever images you want to pull from, I don't have a monograph of his, so we'll just rely on the screen share here. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, I was, uh, I was looking at Fan Ho for the first time, uh, last night. Um, I, I believe, uh, so he's a Hong Kong, uh, photographer who I believe he died in 2016. Yeah. Um, fairly recent. So, yeah. Yeah. Fairly recent. Um, and, uh, so I had never seen his work before and what just, what immediately struck me was just the fact that pretty much every single fo photograph here, like is, is a great photo that you could just say a lot about. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they're conceptually interesting. They're interesting for technical reasons They're And a lot of just, just a lot of them just flat out, like just great photos. Um, there's this one life in a slum. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh you 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 showed that great photo of uh versailles right where yeah. everything is just kind of you know blackened except for uh what he thought was relevant here you have you know this entire um i guess if this is the slum right if this is the entrance uh, uh to it inside further um you know you, the entire thing is blackened but the fact is like you, you do actually get sufficient information Mm -hmm. You get the light coming, you know, at, at the, the brick here. So you get to see exactly what the shape is. Yeah. You get to realize that, you know, it's unfinished, like whatever this is leading to, whether it's a, a sewer or an apartment or something, um, you know, exactly what the rest of that texture most likely uh, uh, looks like. Right. So uh, the, the fact that you get a lot of information purely by implication there, you know, I think it's nice. Right. I, I think it's a nice uh, uh, way to kind of, you know, uh, de deal with space. Right. I'm just going to give a little bit while, in fact, giving um, uh, so much else. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, the light is kind of, you know, I guess sort of uh, unexpected. Right. In terms of this, you know, the, the title is Life in Slum uh, is the light you know, in any way, is it ironic? Is it merely illuminating? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, there, there's a different things that you could, that you could say about that. Um, and I mean, just, just, a, just like, this is like the first photo in the collection and it's already like immediately arresting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you, you hit on a lot of the key points there. Um, compositionally here, yeah, a lot of great choices made, obviously the figures, are critical um if if there weren't figures in this it wouldn't be nearly as powerful right uh, if it was just that doorway even with that light as beautiful as it is as interesting as it can be uh, the figures are pretty critical to the storytelling here and from a technical perspective uh, what i would say is that what he was content to do here you already talked about just you know the the shafts of light there on that kind of rough hewn wall but uh, he would have been sitting in this this dark alley or through this passageway waiting for what he wanted right in terms of the right composition with with figures and this time of day and everything he probably knew all that that he could maybe get good light at this time of day but he's content to just expose the negative properly for that bright light opening right so he keeps all the detail there and lets almost all the detail drop out of the uh the passageway hence we get the the pure mm -hmm. blacks that we do right so some photographers might have made a decision to try to illuminate more of that or ah, oh, you know I, I want more of that to be exposed such that you could see shadow detail and so on uh but i think he made it the perfect choice here to just hey most of this photograph can go completely black uh and, and then he's got beautiful exposure there in the the framing of that mm -hmm. archway so yeah yeah um here's i mean here's the next one i mean also just immediately right so well i guess the three men walking 1962 mm -hmm. um also just like you know uh you you've kind of eliminated you know everything you know natural right i mean just like you've almost you've almost reduced this to like a level of abstraction right it's like you have th these lines coming here, you have these diagonals and these triangles, right? You have these like sharp angles 
you have an arrow pointing forward, right? This is like some sort of a, a road, right? You're going to mm-hmm. surmise, but you, 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 you know, with the exception of these three figures, right? Um, probably if you take them away, you won't exactly know, you know, uh, what this is. You won't even have like much of a scale, you're right, to compare compare it to. But um, I, 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 to me, like the most arresting part of this uh, photo is how everything is reduced pretty much to these like, you know, discrete, you know, levels of abstraction, right? These discrete abstract elements almost, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Um, what about a, a couple of his images out on the water? I think those are some of his very best. Um, yeah, you know, where oh, he's- yeah, fl- yeah, floating family. Yeah, he's presumably in a boat taking mm-hmm. this, uh, right? And so he gets, he gets in a perfect position. So he's got several of these from out mm-hmm. in the harbors around Hong Kong. Um, and it, you know, I think this is a nice photograph. It's 1957, right? So heart of the 20th century. This is the type of photograph that encapsulates a lot of the progress in photography up until this point for a few reasons. So number one, we have atmosphere, right? In the, in the background of this, we have bordering on some of that sfumato pictorialist style with the the fog or the steam or whatever it is that's back there that's kind of shrouding the trees and and what's going on so that's beautiful in its own way and gives a an elegance and an atmosphere to this then in the foreground near to us we've got water we're we're out on the water right so he's got to have some kind of fairly portable camera set up with him um and he does a beautiful job with the the light play and the undulations of this water right so it's it's the perfect amount of dis, like distorted yet still calm. And we're getting the reflection of these, these people in the boat coming toward us. And then, um, you know, to take this at almost water level is a really smart choice. So imagine if he were standing in basically the same height as that person who's guiding that boat, it loses that foreground of the water, which is a key dynamic element here. So um, the, the, you know, the beautiful tones that go on, everything from the whitest whites down in that water to the darkest blacks and like, mm-hmm. the, you know, her, um, his or her, I can't really tell if it's a man or a woman, they're uh, guiding the boat, but like their clothing uh, and then all these tones in between. And just also, it's a documentary photograph, right? There's nothing staged about this. This is just him out in the harbor that day finding it uh, and, and also taking a fairly sharp photograph overall. Mm-hmm. Right, I, I'm guessing this would have been a 35 millimeter camera, maybe a, a a pretty portable medium format. Who knows exactly? But um, anyway, you know, there's just a, a a lot of wonderful elements to a, a composition like this yeah. at that time. So, yeah, um, especially from from a distance, right? These the, these white spots are just uh, uh, just really um, uh, distinctive. Right, uh, they're almost like you know Monet's uh, water li- lilies, uh, sort of like floating on a little bit. Um, everything else around, they just kind of, um, it's kind of like m- more obscured, right? But that's because like that's just kind of the interplay of uh, uh, of the light. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I agree. This is uh, another one of uh, his distinctive ones. Um, here's here's one that he titled uh, "Another Dimension." Mm, right and it's yeah. and it's yeah. and it's just you know let me um you know capture uh, the shadow the light right uh and uh, by making the legs upside down right there is yeah. there is is going to be kind of you know very uh, foreign uh, exotic quality to it right yeah. um like I, h- how would you you know get at something at the level of you know uh almost like sci-fi type of abstraction without doing any kind of like like real editing well i mean here's here's one example right um you 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 could you could always find you know sub quadrants in reality that have that very kind of distinctive uh, uh level of abstraction right um even if it's just kind of like getting a you know like a completely found right it's just a wall right with a road Right, but simply having these three people walking upon it, um, that makes it seem very exotic because everything else is just kind of, you know, just shapes, right? And mm-hmm, suddenly mm-hmm. three three people emerge, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, and he yeah. he does a lot of this kind of stuff too, right? Yeah, 
um, go to behold man right there with the, the figures in the windows, right? Because this is one of his that's always been mm -hmm. uh, mysterious to me. Mm -hmm. I don't quite know how, you know, how this was taken, um, which is, which is good, which is fine. You know, I'm content not to know. Um, I, I don't know if these are street signs or like multiple window reflections. It, it seems like it couldn't necessarily be, you know, it's not all different people in windows. I mean, the, the children or the younger male figures, especially that are not just silhouetted, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it looks to me like posters or, or something, but presumably this is at night. I don't really know how those are lit or whatever, but you know, this was one that I saw and I was like, ah, oh, it's just nice rhythm, right? This composition, mm -hmm. the, 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 the way that the bounce happens between the different, uh, you know, white zones that then have figures contained within them. And then against this kind of grungy, some information with that grayish tones to the, the wall, but then again, a lot of black on the borders. And he just kind of lets it all be framed up by itself in a way. Yeah. Um, you know, really nice, nice image there. Um, do you, I think the one is in here out on the Harbor with like the sun, uh, really shrouded by cloud. And there's like a dark foreboding looking boat in the distance. Keep scrolling down a little bit. There you go. Dying sun. Oh, dying sun. And, yeah. Yeah. And women toilers yeah. beneath that is beautiful too. But yeah, I mean, this one, uh, caught me the, the first time I ever saw it. Um, maybe we've got a couple of figures on the top of those boats, but you know, this is like taking advantage of your, of your surroundings. I mean, if you just talk about like kind of an ultimate photographic cliche to a certain extent, you like photograph what's around you. Right. But to your point earlier that we talked about, most of it's not worth really taking in, but these boats, like their shapes are just, uh, it's kind of nice for him. Right. Cause these are just mm -hmm. beautiful boats in their own way, but he decides to do this silhouetted frame and the blackness of the clouds up there, um, the way that he exposes properly for the sun so that that's not blown out, you know, that's what's properly exposed. And then he lets the boats fall into complete shadow being backlit and silhouetted against the sky. You know, it's just technically a great choice. Um, really beautiful composition, kind of nice to have three boats, <laughs> you know, like it's, uh, again, a little bit of a photographic cliche, but one of the like rules of composition that you'll hear is photograph in threes or, you know, whatever. And like that tends to be kind of satisfying to the eye. Um, uh, whether that's totally true or not, I, I don't really know. I think you can break that rule plenty and still have great photographs. But this time he's got, you know, the the um, way that everything fades out from near to far, you know, large to small with those boats. So it's just, just a nice composition choice and a good title, right? Like, again, he's not every one of his titles lands, but he at least is calling these something somewhat interesting. Mm -hmm. Dying sun is an interesting choice. I mean, the sun's still pretty high in the sky during this photo, right? So like the clouds are what's really obscuring it. It's not about to, to go beyond the horizon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, interesting choice on that one. And then women toilers right beneath that, Again, another great example of, of yeah. silhouetting with this, the sun behind, you know, that's it's just a, a gorgeous image for, a, I mean, a, reasons that should be apparent to anybody that's looking at it right now, you know, like imagine if he chose to expose properly for their faces so that we get all the detail of their bodies and stuff. It's not that that couldn't be a good photograph, but to me, this is just like so powerful. We don't need to see every detail of their you know, their clothing, their face, everything else. It's, it's really told from the outline with yeah. the yokes and the buckets and their hats and all this stuff. I mean, that's just, a, that's a great picture. And there's another one, like going back to some of the abstraction, uh, that he does. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back, back to mother. I mean, here mm -hmm. we have like, you know, this like distance between the two girls crying. Um, but like it, interestingly, like, you have these like jagged teeth like on the way to the path to the mother and also i mean this this photo is taken so that it would be like very very kind of long across right mm -hmm. so it's almost as if like this is an almost like insurmountable distance in a sense <laughs> yeah right um for a child yeah yeah, yeah com combined with the, with the teeth and the danger right to to go uh, this far i mean another kind of very very interesting uh, use of abstraction and, and space mm -hmm. um 
let's see there yeah. there were uh, a, a few others that definitely bamboo yeah. man you know bamboo man is is interesting oh, yeah. uh yeah. you know this one here with again it's, it's kind of like a pretty classic straightforward documentary photograph but to choose to take it on the diagonals mm -hmm. instead of straight ahead you know great choice i mean that that makes this photograph that's pretty simple but yeah um yeah just um, just just smart uh all around there children's paradise uh-huh yeah um you know beautiful so, picture yeah i mean yeah yeah he's so good Pro you know, probably the, in the same in the same in the same slum right he probably. could have like taken yeah. that um and you know they're kind of like running and like the, the paradise right i mean like you, you have all that light coming there they're mm -hmm. not necessarily like running uh, uh towards it up there right but they're just kind of you know go ba back and forth right they're clearly uh it, it, in enjoying this moment whereas like you know for everyone else that is most likely viewing it right if you could imagine most people in hong kong in 1959 in the position to view this photo right uh the the laundry right is a clue of something else mm -hmm. right these kinds of you know uh totally exposed uh weathered walls right they're a clue as to as to something else right but to everyone else within it this is not a clue to anything other than this is just you know an everyday kind of you know routine uh existence right um yeah. here's one you know like little thing but i mean it also stands out right i mean this mm -hmm. thing this, this this uh um duster is very distinctive you, she has you know the striped suit um you have these like four black stripes going down interplay with the bottom the sides this thing her hair her stripes hers are going uh down as well but the other like the back the to back stripes are horizontal, are, are yeah. horizontal yeah yeah um and also like if, you, if you want to think of it as also just like a documentary you can you know this is a woman cleaning in hong kong circa uh, 1950 mm -hmm. right um yeah it, yeah it could be let's see oh yeah right here yeah so from hong kong yesterday all kind of like go. sepia tone yeah, um, yeah yeah this is maybe his most famous picture yeah yeah so i, I mean like with the way that that he described it right he he said that um he's trying to capture like her you know in her kind of a current state of existence and uh this the shadow right is the future right it's 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 age it's death um i i think i think he sort of like more specifically characterized it as 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 a, a looming age but you know the, the great thing about this is it doesn't have to be looming age i mean it could simply be uh a woman that's standing lost in thought perhaps mm -hmm. anxious about something that's supposed to come you know tomorrow right or you know something that's about that to happen even sooner yeah. um it, or you know it could be like you know a hundred other possible interpretations right but definitely like i mean with the shadow and given the context of her kind of you know meditative meditative face um there is like perhaps like some sort of negative or perhaps like maybe you know ambiguously negative thing that's approaching um or you you know you, you get a little bit of, of that sense at least i think uh here but um very distinctive you know great use again of abstraction right he's very he's very very good at this yeah. um and you know he seems to be able to do so many things in in different ways and i mean and even this i'm just noticing for the first time how you know just how absolutely bright and distinct this part is mm -hmm. going down right i mean it's just yeah. you know it's it's as white as those you know uh floating bits of white that he has on 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 the river photos right right yeah which yeah again just to in a brief technical note photographically th this is something that's talked about a lot that's difficult to achieve right is your 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 tonal range and um how how to hold all of it together so to go from your whitest brightest whites to your crushed deepest darkest blacks and then you know hold and retain everything in between those two as well um and some you know some photographic setups allow you to do that some you just really have to kind of make a choice mm -hmm. on which one you want to emphasize um you know in his case here there's nothing that's i mean her dress i suppose is is quite dark but um yeah you know this is it, it's a it's a simple photo but 
to your point, there's there's more underneath the surface, right? Yeah. The, the longer the longer you look at it. And, and speaking of range, I mean, a lot of this is all supposed to be the same kind of texture, right? But here we have a certain quality of white to the wall, right? Here on this side, it's it's absolutely white, right? And the whitest part of of, of the photo here, it's the same wall, but it's a little bit darker, right? Mm -hmm. And here it's even darker than this side. Uh, here we get um, uh, like the ground that is about as as dark as you could get, and the darkest thing is her her dress, right? So again, like it, it is a very good range, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it, it just it just does so much with just like just 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 having these shapes aligned, um, and I mean the geometry definitely uh, works quite well in that yep. regard. Um, yep. So. Yeah, that, that that is definitely a, a great photo. Uh, sim similar idea, right? It's the same kind of boats mm, that are all yeah. kind of obscured by by black. Sure. Um, a little yeah. uh, less less arresting in some ways because they're not they're not as totally black as, as those other ones, but mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> si similar kind of a uh, idea. Yeah. Um, was there anything else specifically in in, in this? Oh, uh, this one, um, childhood. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks, so it's, it's titled a uh, childhood, uh, 1959. Um, and the, 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 the thing like just conceptually, what I think is like a really uh, great about this photo is, um, going back to the title. So you have this title, you know, in the most obvious sense, you know, it is referring to perhaps like, you know, her, her childhood, let's say, right. Um, and she's like, you know, maybe sitting around thinking about things, right? Maybe this is a depiction of uh, what she's feeling, but th th it also just demands a lot from, you know, like subjectivity from the viewer, like viewer interplay, because uh, uh, titling a childhood, like the, the, the fact that she just has this kind of, you know, meditative look in her face, this is exactly what you as an adult, you know, who's perhaps able to appreciate that this photo when you think of the word childhood or you think back to your childhood, you, you simply adopt the same kind of meditative state, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's this kind of like odd, you know, bit of equality between you who's kind of like tapping now into your own thoughts, your own memories of these things. Perhaps yeah. you're making comparisons, perhaps you're making contrasts with maybe what her life uh, might have uh, been like uh, at this time. But um, it, it, it immediately like, gets the viewer to start doing all of that right to start going through a similar kind of process that is implied by the title and by her own look sure right and i mean like you have like you know this little apron right it's kind of you know off kilter here kind of you know turning over a little bit um it seems mm -hmm. to be kind of uh, dirty right she's like sitting with these uh maybe potatoes or, or sweet potatoes um yeah well, and if if it were uh, you know a slightly larger body and an older face, you know this could easily be an older person, right? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like that. Yeah. Again, to your to your point on as an older person, as an adult, you'd look at this, and you also can you know you can project into her future, or you you wonder, you know, is, will this be where she continues to work forever? You know, is is that playing in here at all? So yeah, there's. Um, there's a lot going on again, you know, like who knows how long he would have had to, to sit here to try to get this picture too, because it's got that very documentary feel. I mean, the frame, the sub framing of the biker right behind her there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's so difficult, right? Like to freeze this just before it intersects with her left arm, you know, I mean, these are things that photographically, like it doesn't sound like a, that big of a deal, but like, it, I, it's just impressive, I guess, is what I'm saying, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, it's, it's tough to pull that off. Um, so anyway, it's, there's a lot going on there. And I, we probably should move on because I feel like we could talk about Fan Ho for a really long time, but we've got quite a few yeah. other photographers. Just, 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 just one, one uh, uh, last one, maybe two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. J journey to uncertainty, just, you know, taking this, uh, I guess, focusing on the top, uh, I'm not sure if that would naturally elongate it so it co comes out like this, but I mean, there, there was like some curvature going on in the ground. So maybe there was like some editing after the fact, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, just like, again, back to the, the abstraction, right? That this could be, you know, this could be a snapshot of some sort of like, you know, post op 
apocalyptic like anime you know that could come out yeah, like good, this good. year right i mean you know this could be like japanese animation that's trying to get this idea of like uncertainty or you know like this kind of like going into this um you know this uh, uh, uh unclear uh, uh destination but uh, i mean mm -hmm. very 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 modern um, yeah my just real quick my hunch is that uh, from a technical perspective he might have just used simply a, a super wide angle oh, basically uh, fisheye lens to take mm -hmm. this so he probably was crouched down um you know at, at ground level mm -hmm. and then a lens like that could take in that entire frame top to bottom and it would create this distortion that you see so yeah. I, um again just given that you know we didn't have computers to work on the image in any way and do this like i, I think i was probably in camera that he did yeah. it. so um yeah. and, and i mean just this quick one track of fear right mm. yeah um just in, interesting intersections uh perhaps to a japanese uh viewer this might mean something more um not japanese uh uh to a Chinese viewer, this might uh, mean something like this, whatever's mm -hmm. on that sign, who knows? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, just another interesting one. Yeah, so we could, we could uh, close out um, with him here.